All right, it's uh, Wednesday. That means it's the day after game one. Wild and um, Blackhawks last night. It was fun. It was entertaining. It kept us uh, on the edge of our seats at the Lindale Tap. And by that, I mean me and Judd Zolgad. We were hanging out last night. Mm -hmm. I guess I can come in for the super close-up. There, oh. there we go. Oh, it's, but seriously, 3D. it's 3D, baby. We were, little, we were living large uptown last night. Little Lindale Tap, little, uh, little hockey, and... Uh, a little overtime, and it, you could see it coming in the third period that, uh -huh. that this thing was going to go a little extra. So we both had to run home uh, for different reasons. But run uh, home. Got, got, got home. Got home in time to see uh, the club act again. Oh, just great! It didn't see us getting done in by Bickle. Of all the overtime heroes we could have picked, I didn't think Ryan that was going to die. But, but uh, uh, you know, it was it was it was a fun game, entertaining game. And when when we found out Harding was in, I have to admit I was expecting disaster, and I'm glad to say I was very wrong. That was a great hockey game. We're going to talk a lot about that hockey game. Hey, here's something cool. Eleven o'clock, Barry Melrose is going to join us. Uh, what else do we got today? Chad Graff of the Pioneer Press. He covers the Wild at ten thirty. Chip Scoggins at ten. Suhan was at United Center. He's on at noon. And then you know what? We're not talking a lot of twins today, but we are talking twins with Terry Steinbach at eleven thirty-five. We've already taped it. Some great stuff on Steinbach's work. I thought with Joe Mauer. At the catching position. Very enlightening, I thought. And just to, to, to clear up any possible confusion, before the show, you know, we like sitting here and listening to some tunes. And while we're listening to tunes, sometimes I'll throw out some random lyrics from these tunes onto, onto, onto Twitter. Uh, it doesn't mean I relapse. Just because some of the songs might be a little dark, or some of the lyrics are a little dark, I had a couple of people tweeting that they thought I relapsed. Just music that we listen to before the show, Judd. It's just how we get into the zone. Are you still with me? Yeah, no, I'm still there. No, I mean, I, I don't know what's going on. People, relax. I thought you were just going to give a, sol a soliloquy. Well, that was a bit of a soliloquy. Do you go. want to tag it? I'll tag it. Oh, the show's going to start. Yeah. Should I keep the camera on to watch you open a show? Would that be exciting for the people? Sure. Well, then we, we'll leave the light up. All right, just for a minute. Okay, we're going to... We're going to start the show, inside radio stuff. You know, I should probably put my headphones on and pay attention, because we're going to do a radio show here, believe it or not. It is going to be the start of the show. Attention. Hang on, let me get my earbuds. You need to pay attention. My you earbuds. Hang on. Yeah, yeah, ADD. Here we go. I think I have my earbuds in. That's my left. Where's my other? You'd think I'd be ready for this. We've done this before. All right, let's flip it over here. We're going to start a radio show. Oh. That sanitizer, I spilled that all over my computer. I'm such an idiot. Here we go. It's Here, a radio yep. show. We're about to start a radio show. Show Harrigan. Where's Harrigan? Harrigan. Wave. Uh, Wave. It's Harrigan. Live. Don't flip them off. Don't do anything you'd regret. Oh, here we go. It's time to start the show. Ah, oh, here we go. Two fisting. Ah. Uh -huh. Oh, Doc. Cal Clutterbuck. Why are we watching MMA? What the hell's going on in here? We really are going to do a radio show. I'm not kidding. It really is starting. It's all happening. Oh, I hate that song. Turn I that off. That song. Oh, now you... Why you gotta do that, Harrigan? Why you I gotta do that? I hate that song. Why do you have to do, do that? Do, 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 do. Oh. oh, it's just hockey. Oh, Harrigan, hate it, Harrigan. Why you gotta do that to the fans this early in the morning? You're so mean. Oh, I know it is catchy. I hate it. Hey, it's by the way, noxious. that game it might as well be a commercial jingle. That game production at the United Center. If you listen to it, all the music, it's fantastic. They got to go to this school. Is a radio yes. show, a real game production from the folks at the United Center. All right, I don't even have to ask you this question, Ooh. Jeff Dubay. Yeah, okay. I know the response. Okay. If I was to, uh, so last night when I walk into the Lindale Tap to watch the uh, Black Cox Wild game with you, we were there. And we I, were there. And I inform you that um, Nicholas Backstrom has been helped off oh the my ice God. in pregame warmups. And you know Jason Palmerville isn't playing. Yeah. Why don't you tell the fans, cleaning up your language, what your immediate reaction was? Well, I thought we were screwed. Is that clean enough? I mean, yeah, that's fine. And in all honesty, I, I tweeted uh, right away that I wanted yeah, to, I wanted to get caught up in the human drama and, and the excitement of the you know the the, the opportunity for for Harding and, and the Wild opening the playoffs. But I was so scared to death of what was going to happen to this guy that I couldn't enjoy it. I mean, I I had visions of that Edmonton game running through my head. I was I was remembering how how overmatched he looked, how out of out of sorts he looked, and I thought to myself, it's not fair to this guy to put him in this position. What are you doing? And in that first period, I'm not going to lie to you. I didn't think Josh was very sharp. I mean, he didn't give they played good defense. Yep. Chicago was in a tentative feeling them out kind of a thing. Yep. But any shot that fluttered to the net, yep. he he batted around and I mean, he he really fought the puck. He really fought the puck. I'm sure he had some nerves. 
And and yeah, I just want to say props out to Josh Hardy because as the game went along, he started controlling rebounds. He started looking confident. Mm -hmm. I mean, these 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 shots that he was mishandling and leaving in, in the slot. All of a sudden, he sucked into his belly, nice and soft, hung on to him, you know, for face-offs instead of rebounds. And he played a hell of a game. Had he won a Judd, it would have been a Disney movie. It would have been the closing scene of a Disney movie, the Josh Harding story, and it would have been, been it. it would have culminated in an overtime win against the Blackhawks. But uh, now the now the Imagineers are back to the drawing board. Uh, but nonetheless, I'm really really happy for 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 Josh Harding. I know he's not feeling. I would imagine he's not feeling great about it today because it's a it's a playoff loss. But but you know he he really showed me something last night. Harding, who of course is battling MS, had not started a game since January 30th when he was pulled after letting uh, two goals in on four shots against these same Blackhawks at the X. Shortly thereafter, I think he missed two months um, while he was while well, they were basically, I think, trying to get the, Tinker with the meds. trying to get the medication right for his MS. Yep. He comes in last <laughs> night. You look like a um, near visionary, though, when I walked in the bar and told you this because you said yesterday on several occasions, oh, yeah. "How can you not have another backup goalie up?" And yes. This guy played great. That was, if nothing else, you know what last night was. I know Wild fans are disappointed. Maybe they are, but. Last night was why we did an entire segment on the uptick in play from the NHL regular season to the playoffs. Yeah. That was a fantastic, fantastic. If you had no fun. stake in that game, if you didn't care who won or lost, that was a fantastic hockey game to watch. Yeah, and not to downplay uh, you know, our squad or what our squad did or nearly did in this game, but Chicago did not impress me. I mean, they, they were awfully flat. They, they, like you said, you know, the, the playoffs start, you get into game one, period one. You don't necessarily go, you know, guns blazing. You come out a little feeling them out kind of a period. But the, the, I'm watching the, the, the first period and the early part of the second thinking, there's going to come a point where Chicago puts the, puts the hammer down, and then they just start to play their game. We got to the third period, and I said, you know what? We're not going to see Chicago's game tonight. They're just, they're, they're just, this, this is it. What we are seeing right now is what we're going to get to the end. It's going to be two teams just kind of duking, uh, duking it out at, on, on level footing. And uh, I just, I thought there would be a point where the Blackhawks would care to impose their will. Once we got to the third period, I thought that's no longer a possibility. And, and they never they never really were able to. I've seen, and you have seen, a lot of playoff hockey. And the first period last night actually was a very normal first period of a playoff series. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're talking about two teams that don't see each other all that much. Blackhawks and Wild played three times. Last night's first period was very, to me, by the numbers of what you see. There was one bad goal. Crawford gave up. The Clutterbuck goal was a bad goal. It yes, should have been 0-0 after terrible. one. But I am with you, and if you're saying you're surprised the Blackhawks did not up the tempo and change the style and go back to what we expected from the Blackhawks in the second and third period, I'm with you. Mm -hmm. But, but, give credit to the Wild, because the Wild did come out and had a good game plan. They were, I thought, just ag aggressive enough. Um, Zucker was fantastic. He was the best Zucker, player on the ice for that. Zucker was absolutely. And, and I saw somebody put on, on Facebook uh, about Zucker. What a heck of a player! But the thing with Zucker is, you don't get that every game from him. He was fantastic. You know who else was great last night? Who else was great? Brodziak was great. Yes, he was. Brodziak had several quality scoring yep. opportunities. You know who wasn't great? Our top line. Now, but I was going to get to that. Were they, they got better. They got better. Well, and were they also not great because they were playing against the Taze line? And remember, the Taze line didn't go crazy either. That's true. Were you ta are That's you, true. Are you talking about, are you, and this is bad. I'd have to go back and see the, some of them, how often they matched up against well, them to, to really break it down. But offensively, they did not give much. And this is bad for the Wild long term because the Blackhawks go deeper than Minnesota does. But are you talking about a, at least a game one where you had top line almost nullifying top line? Because remember, the Hosa goal came on a power play. Yes, it did. That came on a power play. So are you talking? Which, by the way, came off a penalty by our top line on Parisi, two hundred feet from our own net. Yes, who was Bad called for penalty goaltender interference on Crawford. Here's the other incredible stat from last night. To me, this one's mind-boggling. Ryan Suter. Played 41 minutes and 8 seconds of like, that hockey Yeah, you game. seem really surprised by that. I'm surprised you're surprised 40, by that. 41. He played well, you know he's gonna, 41 You know he's going to play 30 minutes. in a regulation game. You know he's going to play 30. I understand that. All right. I understand well, that. I know it's a lot. But what I'm saying is he played in game one, he played 41 minutes. Two things. Necessity necessity, and three off days. I mean, that's I got no problem with it. Or two off I have days. No, no I'm, not, I'm not complaining about it. I'm saying... But just put that in the context. I know. Hey, he's, put that in the where context would they be of how much he is on the ice. He's, he's, he is the MVP of this team. I mean, if, if you're going to hand out awards right now for you know, regular season awards, who's the MVP of the Minnesota Wild? I say Suter. I don't even, I'm not even thinking it's close, to be honest with you. He's on the ice half the time. Without him, we've got nothing. 
without him, we have nothing. And Brodine and Suter Brodine, are very Brodine's, nice. Brodine's good, but if Suter yes. wasn't there, how, how good would Brodine be right now as a 19-year-old? I mean, I we'd he, be lost without Suter. I think Brodine alone would be a good player. I think with Suter, he's way, way above that. Correct. And Suter, and I'm not saying I'm surprised Suter played 41 minutes, 8 seconds. What I'm saying is put that into context. When you say, well, Suter was on the ice for both goals against, yeah, because he was always on the ice. Yeah, he was always on the yeah. ice last yes, night. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. And then, and then one of those, one of those, by the way, like you pointed out, was a power play. So he's out there, he's out there on a penalty kill, which does not go into plus minus either. So I mean, it, yeah, if you, if you're going to play half the game, you're going to be out there for some for some goals against. And he he also, by the way, thwarted numerous efforts, including uh, that one in overtime. Where where basically Harding was beaten and and, and I, boy I forget who had it right up front they were coming around to the near side trying to slip a little backhand by him mm-hmm. and Suter got a stick in and poke checked it by I mean without that play the game's over you know so at six seven minutes earlier than it was let me run a theory by you that I have about last night's game mm-hmm. I understand Backstrom going out in pregame warmups looked like it was of enormous consequence sure that's your number one goalie he's played all these games for you he's your guy and now you've lost him. Not in the morning skate, not in the previous game, but you've literally lost him as you're about to submit your lineup for that night's game right. to the officials. Yeah, outrageous. Here's my theory, though. I think the Minnesota God hates the Wild. No, no. I think the Minnesota Wild play. I could have gone with that. I think the Minnesota Wild. No, God hates the Timberwolves. Oh, of course. And he's not a big Viking fan, <laughs> but he doesn't hate the Wild. It's too early for him to hate the Wild. My theory is this. They blocked 21 shots last night. Scandell and Spurgeon combined for 11 blocks. Mm. The Wild played a better, more intense, more focused game because Nicholas Backstrom didn't start and Josh Harding did. I don't disagree with that. I don't disagree with that at all. I mean, they, they were locked in defensively. And then when I say defensively, I'm talking about Ford's back checking too. I mean, I saw Zucker block a shot, all right? I mean, Zucker took one from the points. And he's not a defensive stalwart by any stretch. No. But uh, I think I thought he was, uh, you know, I guess he or Suter would be you know, the, the two guys you'd say were the best players on the ice for the Wild last night. I, I definitely think that there was a. I mean, the Wild. Any any team is going to be defensive minded. Any team is going to take care of business on the end. It's a playoff game. You're playing Chicago. You're playing a team that absolutely brings it. So you, you um, brings it offensively. So anyone's going to have a defensive mindset and, and take care of business. But I, I'm with you that there, there was a locked in kind of version of this of this team when it comes to getting getting back back checking taking care of business in your own end. I mean, they weren't going to let anything slip through the cracks, and they they were very thorough. I mean, it was body on body all night long. The one time they got. Tripped up, you know, it was, it was a power play. But when the Blackhawks come across, they're, they're coming in with speed, four wide across your blue yeah, line. A, yeah. And I mean, and you've got a guy who's smart with the puck. I think it was Taves. Didn't Taves set up Hosa? Yeah, but whoever, did, yeah. whoever's got the puck there, he's, he's, he's looking to his left at a rookie defenseman, a very good rookie defenseman. He's it, was looking, Kane, it was Kane. Okay, it was Kane. So it was Kane's, he's, he's bearing down on a rookie D. Yeah. He's got two good options to his left. He's got one good option to his right, coming in at full speed, and he just feathers a, just a soft little pass. Just behind Brodine, that's running right the stick of Hosa, and they, I mean, when they're coming in four wide with speed, they've got options, and they're they're just too many options. Well, and Yo tried to say in his post game last night that the Wild didn't change their style or their game plan because of the change in goaltenders. Their mindset might have. I believe their mindset changed, and those guys in that locker room have seen what Josh Harding has gone through. Going back to what you said yesterday sure. about boy, if this guy has to play, etc., etc., etc. Yeah, that could be a train wreck. All of that. Those guys have seen what this guy has been through. Yeah. And now he's going to start game one of the playoffs. You can't tell me that defensively, at least, they might not have changed any of the game plan, but the focus shifted immediately to we're not going to let this guy get embarrassed. And you know, he did not have a great first period. He was fighting the hockey. He ball. really fought it. He was really fighting it. it. But what happened? He got he, better. He got he confident. Got, he got better. And they got comfortable. and they did everything in their power, everything in their power defensively to support him. Yep. And I don't think Backstrom gets that same type of effort from his teammates. And that's not an indictment of those teammates. No. Rather, to me, it's a praise it, of them because they yeah. looked at the situation and realized what they had to do if they right. were to have any chance of winning that hockey. When game. something happens, it's like it's like you pay more attention to your driving when it's snowing out, don't you? Doesn't mean you're a lazy driver in the summer, but all of a sudden something happened and now you're locked in. Yeah. That's I mean that's that's all it is. It's it's it's, 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 it's the same type of thing. Your, your your concentration goes up a notch. It's not like you're. It's not like in the summer you're you're putting on makeup and eating a burger or, or reading a book while you're driving down three ninety four. You don't put on on your makeup like, in the summer you, when I mean, you're driving down three ninety four. But you know what I'm saying? You wake up. Who's in Calhoun? I'm mostly yeah. my makeup on. <laughs> I mean, you wake up, the snow's flying, there's six inches on the ground, and all of a sudden, now you're locked in. you got to be locked in, and that's kind of what happened with the Wild last night. So I think the key question now is this series. We didn't know what Good to expect analogy. going into this series. We didn't know what to expect because, like I told you, 
in some ways, if they win one or two games, I'm happy. Yeah, yeah. But that was a great game last night. The Wild played well. So you brought up, before the show started, for us to weigh in on and for callers to weigh in on, you brought up the key question, and what is that key question? Well, you know, these things go one of two ways. When you come out as a dog and, and you play a really strong game, stronger than a lot of people expected, you know, you got you got people in one camp say, hey, you, you look good. You come out of this with some confidence. I, I like your chances. You, you know, all of a sudden, this this looks like it's more doable than before. The other fl- uh, flip, the other side of the coin on this one is, boy, that was your chance. That, you, you, know, you got Chicago on a flat night. You played a big game. You had your opportunity, and you let it get away. Now it's now it's going to go the other way. And it's going to go the other way in a hurry. But there's always just those two, those two camps. You know, those, those are the two schools that thought on this. Boy, you look good. All of a sudden, you're in it. You got a chance, or no, you missed your opportunity. Now you're in trouble. I am personally, Judd. No, no, don't, don't give it. Oh, you know, oh, it's a don't tease. Give it yet. It's a tease. It's a tease because oh, wow. I want to get your opinion on that. I'll give mine. More okay. importantly, we want the callers and the emailers to weigh in on it's this. It's got to go one of two ways. 651-646-8255. 651-646-8255 to respond to Jeffrey's question. Outside the Metro, 877-615-1500. And as always, studio at 1500ESPN.com. Studio at 1500ESPN.com. Dot com. Judd Zolgad, Jeff Dubay. The show is Judd and Dubay from the RanchersWarehouse.com studio on 1500 ESPN. Okay, so now we're in a break. Now the people, oh, in, the video, are go the people in the video are yeah, not going to get the... We teased, we teased to nothing for the video. So we got to tell the people. How do you go on this? Did they blow their chance or is it, is it going to be better than we thought because they look good? I think the Blackhawks now come out and roll them. I think we're dead. <laughs> I, mean, I know we're a little negative here, but... Uh, I, 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 I think that was their chance, and they missed it. Uh, but I hope they can come back and get Game Three and give us some some reason to watch Game Four. You want to? Uh, I, there's no reason to tag the promo because it's not a promo no, anymore. I did no. the whole it's first like segment the of the longest show. Longest thing ever. Great well, job. Yeah, well, I hope they liked it. Let's All get right, this on bye. YouTube.